How's it going, YouTube? Uh, Tyler Polaris here, guys. Doing a video here on the uh, comparison between the uh, Polaris uh, Pro Ride chassis and the Polaris uh, Axis chassis. So, first off, the one on the left is the Axis chassis. It's my brand new sled, picked it up yesterday. Um, it's a 2017. Uh, the one on the right is a 2012 Pro. Uh, they're both pros, obviously. And um, yeah, I'll give you a quick uh, rundown of the differences between the chassis and stuff like that. So first off, um, I've ridden the 2012 over there has the chain case. I've also ridden a 2015 that has the belt drive, which has the Pro Ride chassis, and then I've all, and then I've ridden uh, the Axis chassis um, as well. So I've ridden all the variants um, that there are in between. So um, here we go. First off. Uh, <laughs> Look at this muffler here. Uh, this is the one that starts with the machine. Um, I will be getting a can uh, ASAP and removing that. Uh, next is uh, the belt drive. You can see the belt drive in there and uh, it's different than the chain case. Obviously uh, the belt drive is a lot lighter. It creates uh, less inertia, stuff like that. I'll bring over here to my other sled so you can see. So obviously I don't have a, the stock muffler. I have a can on. I have an HPS can on my Pro Ride or on my 2017. I'm going to be putting a GGB can because they are the loudest. They are there are, but you can see the chain case. Um, quick differences between those: uh, the chain case is a lot more durable than the belt drive, and um, I've never had any chain case issues. And uh, I know that with the belt drive, you got to be careful because. Um, if you ever, if you're ever in the air and if you land with like a, with like the throttle pinned or something, there's a good chance you can snap that belt. So with the belt drive, you just got to be a little bit more cautious and not as aggressive as you can be with a chain case because it is more likely to break. Okay. Um, next, uh, obviously you can tell that the running boards on the, on the axis chassis, um, are much better than on the other one however these running boards are also the same um, 2013 to 15 on the pro ride because that's when they did get the belt drive option for both you can tell a quick difference in those um, next let's talk about the track okay so the track on the 2012 pro is a, a 2.4 inch and um, you can see on the cleats you can see it has little uh, grooves in the cleats okay track does well Never had any issues, um, stuff like that. On the, and this option is available, I think, I don't re recall when the 2.6 track came out, but I know uh, my dad's 2015 has it. And you can see the difference. Let me move this, sorry, here's the hood. Um, you can see the difference in the cleat. Uh, the cleats on the new track are much thicker and uh, much more, uh, they're a lot meaner and they do a lot better uh, next uh, let's see over okay so front end so let's do front ends so so the front end uh, on the pro ride chassis is a great front end I mean it's a great design nice nimble and uh, great for one skiing and stuff like that on the pro ride the the front end it sits even higher so it's even more of like a triangle if you want me to go back, I'll go back and forth so you can kind of look at the differences. I mean, the obvious shape is a little bit different. Um, also, on a side note, uh, uh, the new covers are absolutely amazing to put over top. <laughs> but um, besides, like, the shape, it being more top-heavy and stuff, obviously, um, it, it does ride a little bit different. The new one rides different than the Pro Ride. Also, uh, the A-arms and stuff like that are, um, this is on the 2012. They're, they're like rounded on the 2012 and uh, on the 2017, excuse me, they're, uh, they're not round, they're, they're like rigid and um, they're a lot, they're a hell of a lot stronger on these new sleds than the old ones. I've never broken a arm or anything like that. Um, I've taken some pretty good hits on my 2012, never broke anything, but these new ones are almost <laughs> damn near indestructible. Um, next, talk about the oil stud. So the oil tank is uh, on the same side, obviously. Your belt's on the, in the same location. Um, one major difference is here, though, the extra belt on the 2017 Axis is underneath the hood. Um, whereas, or they're both underneath the hood, but it's up front here. 
um, on the 2012s there up in here on, on the ProRite chassis the belt sits up here the extra drive belt um, the hood um, here's a little cool thing so these new hoods let me get this back together they go together a heck of a lot easier than the old ones reason being because they don't have those stupid little clips it's just a quick well you gotta get in the freaking hole it's a just a quick snap it's in and it's not in hold. it's just a there's that it's in oh, it didn't actually snap Well, it might help if the hood was attached on the inside. The one thing I did notice about these new hoods is when you open them up, they, oops, let's undo this. They will sometimes fall out of these holes down here more on these new hoods. They fall out, and so when you, I'll put it back on later. I don't really feel like fighting with it on the video. But when you open these hoods, these, these back clips will actually come out. So you have to re-put the, you know, the little snaps in before the hood will go on. Um, you know, on the old hoods, as we all know, they've got these stupid little uh, clips, these little doohickeys. Um, and they're kind of a pain in the ass. They work just fine, but they're a pain in the ass. The new hoods are a lot better. Um, with the top, with the actual hood, I guess those are the side panels, sorry. With the actual hood on the old one to take it off you have to pop out all these plugs there's little plugs here on the other side um i take out you have to take out this you got to unscrew it and then the hood itself will actually pop off okay on the new one all you literally do so they replace those plugs with the little doohickey clips um doohickey clips with the with the side panel clips from the old slot obviously they're not the same they're a little bit different um, better you and you don't have to pop this plug you just undo these two clips one on each side and you literally just lift the hood forward it comes up really easy and it pops off and then it clips in also and the hood just fell, the side panel just fell off and uh, it clips in right here just like the front um, uh, the, the lights on the new one are also uh, they're cool like light blue uh, light blue uh, led bulbs the old lights are just the regular snowmobile lights they work fine um regardless and uh that about sums it up um besides just you know obviously different uh, cosmetic stuff obviously my 2012 has a wrap on it um and uh the uh the 2017 just has the stock stuff but um I think that about sums it up. Um, obviously, the uh, computer on the new one is a lot more advanced. You can you can set it for like uh, if your fuel has ethanol versus no ethanol, or if you're um, running premium or non-premium. It has a lot of different options. So depending what you have available to you. Um, other than that, both of mine are 163s because I like 163s. Um, I need to get a kill switch tether added on the new one. I forgot to get it when I picked it up. And um, yeah, that about sums it up. Oh, besides, here up on the hood, excuse me, here up on the hood, it has a different windshield design. There's a little vent up underneath my bag that's installed, and you can get these cool, like, windshield bags. They're, I think they're like 150 bucks, but you can put stuff inside of them, and then the heat from the engine actually comes up, so you can put your extra gloves or goggles in there, and it'll heat them, keep them warm. Little, little cool thing. Um, they did change the... Uh, the pro taper handlebar it's a lot smaller now and uh stuff like that they also have moved the kill switch um this was actually moved in i think after i think 2013 is when they moved it off the top because as you can tell on my sled on my old, on my 2012 i've broken the kill switch off and i actually had them install another reverse button down here that is my kill switch so a little side thing if you ever break break the shit out of your kill switch like i seem to manage um just do that and prevent the issue uh other than that guys um that sums it up uh t -t -t trying to think if i missed anything off the top of my head uh, dun, dun, dun. uh that's about it um 
the uh, oh with the, with the belt drive versus chain case I didn't want to add uh, the belt drive has a lot better throttle response less inertia um, it's just it's such an awesome an awesome uh, piece of uh, technology that they have installed and uh, whether you're on a 20 like a I, like my dad's is a 2015 I rode that pro ride versus my pro ride which is chain case and uh, just the absolute throttle response and uh, stuff like that with the belt drive it is like a night and day difference so I would recommend to get a belt drive if possible <laughs> unless if you get the 174 then you have to have a chain case because the belt drive cannot hold up to the uh, to the uh, to the ruggedness of the 174 track especially with the three inch paddles um you can get the three inch paddles if you're <laughs> if you're really in that much snow i would like to move where you live because uh i don't i've never been in that much snow where i would need paddles that big so anyways guys though uh thanks for watching any questions anything like that throw them in the, in the comment section and uh yeah guys the season's almost here go out and uh, buy yourself a new pro thanks guys